Hey guys, I'm just out here going about my daily business with the pigeons. Just turned on the water hose so I can start filling up waters. Most of them are either empty or uh, low, so it's time to refill them. Um, I just let my young birds fly. I uh, didn't have, didn't film it because I was uh, not planning to do an update until I went in the loft. And I've had two more babies hatched this morning. I've had one die. I've had some stuff going on, so. I decided it'd be a good time to do an update. Um, if you, I don't know if y'all recognize it or not, but there's Ash right there and his mate Minnie, and they're in there for a reason. Uh, we'll start in the breeding loft though. All right, so I still got the pitcher in here. I just fed them. Um, they didn't really eat any of it. Which is good, that means I've been keeping plenty of food in here. Babies need lots of food. So, first thing I guess to start with is the pair of babies from my uh, Sonder cock, which, to be honest, I've never really met Bill Sonder, and I don't know if any of y'all even know who that is. So, I don't, it's just an easy thing to call him. I need to give him a name or something. I don't know what his band number is, it's that one right there. Anyways, his babies have been moved out to the uh, my little flying loft out there. Um, I put them out there yesterday, I guess. Um, he and his wife or mate, whatever, they actually decided to make a nest in the grip bowl and have laid both their eggs up here with the grip. Uh, I mean, they built a nest out of pine needles first, but uh, yeah. Um, got two roller babies over here from that blue check hen and the, um, I think it's a recessive red bald head roller behind her. So here's the first one. It's just going to be mostly black. It's got one white feather there. And I'm not completely sure what this one's going to be besides small. Uh, maybe... An ash red. It might be something looking kind of like him, but I think their mom is done. So, or which means that she's got the dilute gene. But, uh, I don't know. It's been staying pretty small, though, so I've been sure to keep plenty of food available to them. Then I got this pair of babies in here from my, uh, ash red satinette right there. And my, uh, my older, uh, Andalusian indigo spread cock uh, bald head roller because again I want to eventually make frill stencil rollers um, I'll set them over here they'll be easier to see right off the bat you can see that they both have indigo you can see that little bit of brownish coloration it's harder to see on the camera probably be a little easier to see on this one each uh, edge of the feather there is I uh, got indigo on it or got the uh, the brown on it you can see brown on its chest so both of them have indigo um, just because they have indigo does not mean that they're blue um, this one is definitely a blue which means that it is a hen so this one's a hen um, and I know that because I did a sex link breeding. If you remember, the mom is ash red and the dad was um, blue. He's either blue blue or blue brown, probably blue blue. And uh, blue and brown are both recessive to ash red. So, uh, since the mom could either give um, her Z chromosome, right? Yeah, her Z chromosome, which would have the color on it, or her W chromosome, which is what makes, her, makes them a hen, but doesn't have the uh, the color on it um, if she did not give the color which if she gives her color then it's gonna the baby's gonna be ash red since it's not that means she gave her W chromosome which means that this is gonna be a hen this one I'm not sure if it's blue or not it could be an ash red with indigo I'm really not sure yet uh, it's a lot of guessing until they get older and to be honest I'm not even completely sure if these are spread I'm thinking this one's spread I don't know about that one but uh we'll keep watching them as they get older i'm pretty excited about this pair they're gonna be real pretty
and again the cross is only for that reason just make pretty looking birds um, I'm not expecting them to roll very much if at all they probably will roll some but um, Brittany up here she's sitting on her babies both her babies hatched today so if you're new to my channel this is a newborn baby pigeon it's actually still a little bit damp there's two of them under there and she's not liking me messing then I got Coco and Swift over here he's actually feeding babies right now see him in there feeding I'll show his babies to y'all in a minute though I'll be banding them tomorrow and then I got this other roller across to a a uh, satin net this is cinnamon and this is Hinata my girlfriend named Hinata Hinata does not like anyone see cinnamon he's kind of like not liking that I'm touching him and he's kind of pecking a little bit but Hinata I mean all you have to do is look at her wrong and she starts trying to wing slap him. if I want to look at her nasty it's easiest just to remove her whereas I'm not too worried about the cocks to be in there so here's one baby uh, it looks like it might wind up being brown. I'm not completely sure. And then, here's the other. Again, they're going to have half white wings. Um, I'm really not completely sure about colors yet. They're still both kind of young. Here's Coco up here. And he is going to probably try and tear my hand up. So let me see if I can't just move him. He's getting so big, I can't wrap my hand all the way around him anymore. I didn't realize I couldn't do that. I hadn't really tried. So we got some well-fed babies. Because this one right here doesn't have the black tip on its beak, it makes me wonder if it might wind up being Grizzle. Um, that baby, their other baby that was uh, Grizzle, because they already had two babies, the one that was Grizzle did not have... Uh, black tip to its beak, but it was also ash red, so that might just mean it's ash red. I'm not completely sure. The grizzle may not affect that the end of their beak at all. Here's Cayenne. Uh, he's mated to my tiger grizzle roller hen. There she is, over there. And uh, here's their baby. Seems to be doing pretty well. It looks like it's going to be blue. And it, I don't know if it's going to, it just pooped on my foot. That's nice. Um, I don't know if it's going to have any tiger grizzling or not. Um, here's my homozygous grizzle hen. I think she's grizzle, I'm pretty sure. Uh, she's mated to this uh, younger uh, Andalusian indigo spread cock. And she should just still be sitting on eggs. Nope, nope, you know what? Her eggs were supposed to hatch tomorrow, but... Look at that. Sometimes they hatch early. Or maybe I wrote it on the calendar a day off. There's one. Did one, just one or both hatch? Um, they both hatch. So rollers are a smaller breed. So here are two itty bitty teeny tiny little baby roller pigeons. And about the size of my thumb little itty bitty things now of course I'm gonna put them right back with mom and again shield them with my hand to make sure she doesn't bite them instead of me well, that was interesting I'm glad I decided to check they weren't supposed to hatch till tomorrow so cool that makes four that hatch today I need to write that down in the calendar and then if y'all remember Ash and Minnie oh let me restart the camera before it dies all right so Ash and Minnie had a baby down here and when I came into the loft this morning it was dead um, now, it wasn't underfed or anything, it died with a full crop, but um, I'm not completely sure why it died. It looks a little bit damp down there, and it did rain a bunch yesterday, but I don't feel anything that indicate that my roof was leaking and the water was running down the wall. That wasn't happening before, so I'm not really sure what happened, um, and I could understand why it would be a little damp there from having a dead pigeon lay in there, but... um. I don't know. That's just how it goes sometimes. One died, but four hatched in place today. Um, and 
I moved them out there. I had already made up my mind that as soon as uh, this baby either died or grew up, I didn't expect it to die. But once it grew up, I was going to move them back out to the uh, flying loft and just fly them. Uh, because Minnie, I raised her from a baby, and she was always kind of uh, small and scrawny. Um, and then their uh, first baby of the year, it didn't do very well. It's the one out there that can't fly very well. Um, and then this one died, and they're only laying one egg at a time. So I'm probably not ever going to breed Minnie again. I may breed Ash again. They're not related, and he grew up... Uh, real big and strong real quick as he was a very uh, healthy baby so I'll probably breed him again uh, but not to her I'll probably not breed her again um, no reason to be producing uh, poor quality pigeons um, maybe that sounds weird to some people to say poor quality but I mean she was a real scrawny baby and uh, her offspring so far have not been very strong and healthy, so I'm not going to continue to breed her and produce weak pigeons. And down here I've got these two, which actually I hadn't checked on yet. My black, this is a black hen mated to a blue bar cock, and that's the hen on the nest, of course. Ah, and I'm hoping that they'll both be black. To be honest, that baby's not really looking black. I banded them both. Yeah, the little band's still in there. Gotta check and make sure their bands are still on. I banded them both yesterday. To be honest, they don't really look like they're going to turn out black. Um, they look like they're just going to be blue bars or checks or something. But we'll see. Uh, for those that don't know, the reason she's black is because she has a gene called spread, which spreads out the color of her tail bar. And because she's a blue-based pigeon, her tail bar is black. Or it would have been. Uh, so it's spread out. Uh, just like the black tail bar. You know, one of those. So. And that's a dominant gene. But she probably... She may only have one gene instead of two for spread. And of course, being dominant, it shows up. But, uh... That may be it, so... But, uh, now I can get out here in the grass and scrape the pigeon poop off my foot. So then I've got the young birds out here, which are all doing pretty well, except for Ash and Minnie's baby that can't hardly fly. So, here's Bentley. Still very, very kind, sweet, wants to be with me. And this, that's their baby. Uh, those two right there are the parents of that one and it can't fly very well. Here's my little brown roller. I put it out here too. Uh, I hand raised that one and it's been in the breeding loft for a little while. Um, but now I've got it out here. And I have to admit, it does look kind of scruffy. And don't try flying out, Bentley. If I can even reach it. Come here. Yeah. Can't reach it. I have a bucket that I'd normally stand on. Makes me a little taller because I'm a short person. Yeah, got you. I have to admit, it does look a little bit scruffy, but uh, it can fly. So. But uh, there's my white pair of homers. They're doing just fine. Um, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to keep them out here before I put them in the breeding loft. Um, the overall plan is that I'm going to let all the homers that are in there raise another round of babies. So, uh, everyone in there right now, all eggs have hatched, everyone in there has babies. So the plan is to let everybody, um, well, I guess I've got one pair still on eggs. Um, the ones that made their, uh, nest in the grit, in the grit container. But the plan is to let all these homers raise up one more round of babies, to let these babies grow up. Move them to the flying loft, let them lay eggs, which will hatch into babies, and let them raise those babies again. And then move all my homers, uh, young and old, out to my flying loft, which again, if y'all, those of you that keep up with my channel know, this is only where I've got them temporarily. I am building a flying loft. Uh, this was only ever supposed to be half my loft. 
um, and the other half was going to be attached and this outside wall here would be the inside wall of the other half but I decided I'm going to make the other one um, six feet wide instead of four feet wide because this one's only four feet wide. I want the other one to be six feet wide give me a little more space. Uh, it's still going to be eight foot long and seven foot high. Um, it'll still be same color paint and all that. It'll look pretty much the same. It'll just be a little wider, uh, two feet wider. And uh, that is what I'm going to keep my homers in, pretty much. Um, eventually, I'll probably have to build something else, but uh, that should that should be good for you know at least a few years. Um, but uh, that's the plan. I've you know I've got some money in the bank for it, but I'm still saving up. Uh, hopefully, I'll build it pretty soon. I'll keep you all up to date on it when I do. And then all my homers will go in there, and my rollers will go in here. Um, I'm kind of wanting to let my, my rollers uh, breed longer than my homers. Of course, I don't have to have, a, have any kind of deadline to have all my rollers bred out by like I do my homers, because uh, my homers need to be old enough to race. Uh, my rollers don't, because all they're here to do is look pretty and fly around the yard. So, I'm going to probably let them raise up the babies they're raising and then maybe one more round and then I'll probably switch some mates around to give me a little bit more diversity um, I uh, like some of my rollers in there that are breeding to satin nets right now um, I'll breed them to rollers again I only have three hens I did only have one but I got two more and then I will breed my satin net cock I've got a blue satin net cock I'll breed it to my blue satin net hen and then probably breed it to the ash red satin net hen um, and assuming all, uh, all babies are healthy and live that will give me four more satin nets and then I'll have seven satin nets which would be fine for using as droppers um, but I want to I don't want to raise this breed the satin nets right now because I want to uh, make it easier on myself if I have to hand raise any of them uh, to wait till after I get out of school in a month or so but I think that's about it. I mean, I've got a few pigeons down there uh, that I'm not breeding, but uh, I'm not going to show them to you. I mean, they're just pigeons. Y'all have seen a lot of pigeons at this point, and they're not doing anything special. My uh, Easter pigeon, uh, that's Elvis, my white white king that I died for Easter. If y'all watched that video, it's been a few days now, and the color started to fade some. Um, you can probably kind of tell it's not as bright as it was. Part of that is just, I mean, he hasn't bathed or anything. It just, you know, some of it comes out. I mean, I only use food coloring. Um, not to mention the sun probably is going to um, dilute it a little bit too. But um, it still looks interesting. And he's he should start molting any time. Um, all the other pigeons, have just most of the pigeons have started to molt. Um, my older, younger ones... <laughs> My oldest of my young birds, like Bentley here, have started to go through their first molt, and are molting in some adult feathers. Uh, but my old birds are starting to go through their yearly spring molt. Um, so those feathers will probably not be there all that much longer. Uh, he'll probably molt them all out within a month or two, and then he'll be solid white again. So I think that's all there is to show you. Thanks for watching guys. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos as I continue to update y'all on what I'm doing and I'll be racing this uh, fall and young bird season. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.